Hello, hello, hello. Good morning and welcome to Be The Ram Global Fellowship. I'm Pastor Coach Anthony McKissick Sr. And I'm glad that you decided to fellowship with us today. The first thing I want you to do is share this message, share this link, share this broadcast. We call it putting somebody in the game. And what I want you to do is put about three people in the game. Get them off the bench. Their bench may be sleep. Their bench may be just surfing through TikTok, trying to find some comedy. Or their bench may be that they're tired of church. Let them know that Be The Ram Global Fellowship is live and that it's going to be exciting and that you don't want them to miss what God has to say to them today. I also want you to go to our website, www.betheram.com. Once you get there, you can subscribe to our website. That'll let you get updates and anything else that you need to know about what we're doing. We're big on outreach. We like to reach out and spread the word of God. And now we will begin, as we always do, with our BTR, Total Body Affirmation. We like to affirm our entire body in Christ every day when we wake up. So I'll say it first, and then you repeat after me. Are you ready? You re All right, let's go. God, you are the head of my life. With all my heart, I will fight the good fight. With my feet, I'll walk by faith and not by sight. With my mouth, I will speak life and not death. God, I promise to give you what's right and not what's left. God, you will provide the wisdom, the resources, and the discernment to allow me to be the ram when my opportunity comes. Amen, amen, and amen. Now, it's time for a little bit of comedy. You know me, you know us. We like to get down to this church. So I want you to check this comedy moment out. I always look through TikTok and try to find something that's going to bring humor and laughter to our day. So check this out and make sure you follow that person who's making you laugh. He gave me one more, one more Let us pray. God, thank you for the moment. Thank you for the service. Thank you for the lives that will be won, the saves that will be so the souls that will be saved. God, we thank you for everybody under the sound of my voice right now. We come to you humble. We come to you with a heart of repentance. We ask that you would forgive our sins, the sins that we've done knowingly and unknowingly. God, we're not perfect. There's no perfect Christians in this ministry. You're the only perfect person. So we ask that you would continue to perfect our heart. We ask that you continue to bless our bodies. Keep us free from cancer. Let the cancer dry up. Let all of the sickness and all of the things that would dis-ease our body, our normal functions, let them be eradicated right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for families. We thank you for life. We thank you for being the shield. God, this week when someone tried to come up against you 
and against the ministry and against the family. And even when it was our own wrongdoings that put us in a position that could jeopardize the word from going forth. God, you stepped in. You stepped in and you showed up and you showed out. God, so we thank you. We thank you for new opportunities. I, God, I thank you personally for the no. Thank you for allowing me not to get the job, God, because my steps are ordered. And I won't question what you're going to do in my career path. God, I thank you for the elevation that you've put on on my wife, Lady McKissick. I thank you for the increase that you've put in the lives of all of the individuals that are attached to this church. God, we said it a long time ago, everything attached to me wins. God, this is our winning season. 2021 is going to be major, and it is already major. God, we thank you for the new contracts. We thank you for the new websites. We thank you for the new ideas. God, we thank you for save this closing line, God. Let it become a multi-million dollar investment, God. Let this thing pan out, God. Let it go the distance and let it be a blessing to your community. Let it come back and increase people that would not have had an opportunity to eat, to sleep well. God, let it build houses. Let it build homes. Let it build schools. God, I ask that you would touch our tongues this week. Give us the, the discernment to speak life into situations. Give us the discernment to speak health into situations. God, give us the discernment to be quiet when we need to be quiet. God, thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you for giving us your only son. God, we thank you for what's about to happen in today's fellowship. God, I ask that you would touch our hearts, touch our minds, and put us in an, in a, in an environment to receive, to receive what you're going to have for us today. And let all God's chosen generation say, Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you for being with us right now. Now I'm going to give you an opportunity to pour into this fellowship. We do believe in tithes and offerings. The word of God said that you are to give of your first fruit, a tenth. And I don't do anything that I don't, I don't ask you to do anything that I'm not doing. Now, if you're a member of this church, we are a tithing church. We are a faith-based church. We are a Bible-based church, and we give. And if you're not to that point yet, that's between you and God. But we do it, and we give offering. And if you want to bless this church, if you want to bless this ministry, you can go to our website, betheram.com backslash giving, or you can just send it via Cash App. That is dollar sign BTR Global. But now we'll give you an opportunity to give. We'll put it up on the screen so that you will have a chance to give, you know, while you're out there. So thank you for what you're going to do. We appreciate it. It goes in good ground. And, you know, we give back to the community. So I want to thank you for what you've already done. And I thank you for what you're going to do today. God bless you. Good evening, BDRM Global Fellowship. My name is Bulmira from TikTok, but my name, my true name is Marie Louise. I'm from Haiti. I'm here to testify and to talk about the power of my God and my life. I remember after I finished my high school in Haiti, my mom and my dad, they have five kids, three daughters and three boys. So when, when we went to school in Haiti, life was so hard for us. And after everything, my mom and my dad pushed us. I finished my high school and I went to Dominican Republic to study medicine. When I went to that school, my family who was in United States want to help me. But for some reason, they stopped to help me. They don't help me anymore. And I stopped going to school. When I stopped, and then I went to church. I always go to church because I accept Jesus since I was 17 years old in Haiti. And then I keep going to church in Dominican Republic, especially in Santiago. And then I was the secretary in the church. And I was served. I will serve God without waiting for anything. My pastor, everybody liked me everywhere I go. I don't know for some reason everybody liked me. And one day I asked my pastor to borrow me the church key to go to pray for seven days in that church. 
and I was praying, I say, God, I have nobody, but I know I have you, and I know you can do everything for me. And I, I, after one month after my prayer, a group of missionaries, I don't know how to say that correct name, they came, they came in Dominican Republic to help Haitian in that area, which is in Santiago. And then when they came, the, the pastor wife just looked at me. She said, wow, you look beautiful. I like you. What are you doing in Santiago? I just explained her that I come to study, but my family, they don't want to help me anymore. And I stopped going to school. And she said, you know what? God put you in my way. I'm going to give you a visa to come to USA. And then God did that miracle for me. And I came to USA. And then when I came, I started working as a pharmacy tech. I took that class online and then I passed my board. And then I said, God, I was in medical school. I can do better. And I work full time as a pharmacy technician. And I go to school to Miami Dade College. And you know that Miami Dade that College is not easy. That school, you have to know, you have to study hard to pass that insurance test. They give you a test for four hours in the computer and i thank god because even my country is not good we have a lot of political problems but i thank god for my country because they gave us the basic that we need to live everywhere we go math anatomy biology anything we are good in those ma uh, in those things so i passed my entrance test for four hours and then they accept me in the program for nursing so today was my graduation in the program as a nurse i thank god for everything he has done for me because i remember when i was in dominican republic i can even eat i stay like three four days without eating because i have nobody i have to do people hair to survive sometimes nobody call me to do hair and then i stay without eating nothing because that money sometimes i have i have to save that money to pay my house, to pay my apartment, my life, everything, every month. So God is good. I don't know who needs those words today. I think I, I think God wants to do something special for somebody, especially a woman like me. That going through a lot of things, think that God, God is the end for me. I can't do anything anymore. I'm going to pass away or anything is the end for you. I want to tell you today. You only need to trust God. With God, everything is possible. He can do everything for you. Because, you know, God is near the person who has nobody. Because I used to do people here to call my family in USA. They don't pick up the phone. Or they, they pick up and they close. They hang up the phone to finish all my calls. So they, they don't want to find God who has everything. To do to open the door for me you I know you worry about root whatever you want to do now but one thing I want to tell you that you only need to believe because you see my cat saying that with God I don't know if you can see with God all things are possible you only need to believe if you believe on him, he can do everything for you. And you go to church, you pray a lot. If you take God for a little God, he will do little things for you. But if you take God like a big God, he will do big things for you. Because God bless me. Give me a house of six, six bedrooms and four bathrooms in Florida. I gave residence to my mom, to my dad. I, 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 buy, I buy my car. I go to school and now I'm going to work hard to give residence to my brother and my sister. And I know God will do it. God will do it. Everything I need, God gives me everything that I need. I don't have to worry. I know my country is not good now. But I know one day, everybody will look to go to my country. Because I know God will do something for my country. So you, I'm talking to you today. Anything that you want to do, just start today. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. And don't think that you can do everything by yourself. Give it to Jesus. 
give it to jesus because he can do everything for you you only need to believe you only need to believe as i say my name is bull me up now jesus i'm haitian may god bless everybody may god bless you may god help you to take your decision today you want to go to school go today don't wait I know you feel like you don't have enough knowledge to start, but pray God, God can do everything for you. Because I remember when I came and I go to school, I say, Jesus, how am I going to learn? Because I don't speak English. I speak Spanish, Creole, and French. I don't speak English. I am fighting with English. I'm fighting to speak English. But God help me. God help me to take my exit exam. A lot of people fell in Miami Day. But God make me pass that test. All praise to my God. You, anything you want to do, I don't know. Somebody may look for a girl to get married, to do something. God can do everything for you. You only to trust him. Sometimes there's men, women who are looking for people, like for a man, a woman to get married. They just look at something. They point on somebody on, before they pray God. Don't point in somebody because you don't know people's heart. God know. Say, God, I need somebody to get married. I don't know where he come from. I don't know if he's coming to Africa, to any country. But I need a man who trusts in you, who serve you. I need a Christian. You will find a good man. You will find a good man. God gave me a good man. So I was praying that give me a good man. So I'm not telling you something that I don't live. I'm telling you something that I, I, I live. Somebody in my past, something in my past. I'm telling you the truth. So you only need to believe in God and God will do every single thing for you. I know you have a diploma now. You want to look for a job. Trust in Jesus. He will open the door and give you a good job. And God, I don't know how to say that in English. I hope that I can say that in Creole. God say anywhere you go, God give it to you. Any place that you enter, God give it to you. You only need to believe in Jesus and God's words. You only need to believe in the promises that God put in the Bible for you. You need that to continue, continue. Because everything you see is for Jesus. If your dad is a king, you are a prince, you are a princess. You don't need to worry about anything. It's not going to be easy. Nothing will be easy, but it's not impossible because everything is possible with God. You only need to believe on him. Don't believe in you and your strength, what you can do. Believe in Jesus because he has everything for you. Guess what? Before you born, before God do anything, before God create you, he put everything that you need before he created you because God know what you need. God know what going to make you happy before you even think about it. Trust in God. Trust in, in him and try him. Start today and one day you will call me or come in my TikTok, Bull Miracle Jesus, my YouTube, Bull Miracle Jesus, and you will say, thank you for those words. You encourage me. I go back to school, I find my job, I get married, I have my business, I have my money now, I don't need to borrow from people. God bless me. May God bless everybody. I love you, I love you, I love you everybody from the Rem Global Fellowship. God bless you, Catch. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Another day I will speak more and more. So today I'm giving praise to my God for my graduation day because now I can say I'm a nurse in Jesus name. Amen. I love you all. Thank you. <laughs> so what I want you to do right now, whether you're on your phone, you're on an iPad, on the TV, I need a huge favor from you. As you see, I got on this shirt. It says, save this. I love God, but please don't try me. This is a shirt that was birthed in this ministry, and it was on our website, and it got so popular that I just branched out and turned it to his own store. So now, if you want to go over, or at least bookmark, www.savedish.com.
dot shop, not dot com, dot shop. And I want you to check it out. If you're on YouTube and you look in the description, it'll be down there. But save this dot shop. I got shirts, black, white, whatever color you want. We got hoodies, we got pullovers. But I want you to check it out. I want you to support. Sometimes if you're not the person that you like to give offering and tithes, you can support us in that way. We have so many things that have uh, streams of revenue that are coming in and going right back out. So check out our website. Check out our, our, our shop. And then enjoy this praise and worship. We celebrate you today. Thank you.
can do all things. You can do all things, but better. Cause you've never lost a battle. No, you've never lost a battle. And I know. I This is Pastor Coach McKissick, and I'm here to bring the words. I won't be long. I'll only be before you a few five minutes, and I promise if you leave a few comments and a couple amens. Wait, there's no amen corner because we're virtual. Wow. But I won't be before you long. Let's go ahead and pray. God, thank you for the moment. Please allow me to decrease and you increase. We invite you into this platform. We invite you into this body. Lord, I, for, I ask you to forgive me for my sins. And if just for this moment, I could become pure and pure enough to speak your word, pure enough to reach your people. God, thank you for dropping this word in my mind and in my spirit. God, we thank you. For those under the sound of my voice, God, we thank you and we ask you to remove any distraction 
that may hinder your word from going forth. God, you said it. We believe it. That settles it. And this word will be blessed. In your mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. I have gotten a lot of inspiration for my messages for the last few months from either something that happened during my day at work or from Lady McKissick. It's almost like she should be the one up here speaking the word because the majority of the messages spawned from something that she said. And it's almost like, you know, it's Friday and I'm like, you know, you do know I got to preach, right? God, can you drop something in my spirit? And then it's like, well, maybe I'm not acting right. And maybe my, my thought process is off. And that's why he hasn't, you know, deposited that word yet. But lo and behold, Friday came and my wife came home and she told me about a student. A student who had not been in a school since the pandemic hit. And that would be March. So we're talking about well over a year now. And to keep in mind that this is a freshman. Thus far, they're leaving a middle school setting and coming to a high school setting. And they had to take a test, a standardized test. Now, it's above my pay grade, but I would think that might not be the best thing to do. Bring a kid into a school who hadn't been into a school for over a year and have them take a test that's supposed to represent what they've learned. So she said that the kid and a lot of other kids, when they were done taking their tests, they said, can I use the bathroom? And she said, yeah, go down there and make that list, or just go ahead. And she came into the hallway, and they were all standing there. And she said, uh, go to the bathroom. She said, I don't know where it's at. Oh, make that left. And then she had to remember, these kids have never been here before. They've never been in the building. They're new to this place. And one of the little girls said, I was nervous at first because I, I hadn't been around humans in so long. <laughs> exactly. So that led me to think about something. Why did they trust her? and not the building. Why was it okay to be in the classroom even though they had never been in the classroom? It didn't make sense at first. But I kept thinking about it. And I kept thinking about it. And I said, aha, uh -huh. there's one common denominator here, the teacher. And although when we teach online, you rarely have a kid turn on a camera. You rarely have a kid turn on a mic. You're generally preaching to a screen like I am now. I don't know if you're interacting on this other side. Most people don't leave comments. Most people don't go over to the website. Most people don't subscribe. So it takes a lot of confidence as an educator and a preacher to continuously preach to a screen with no response. As I say all the time in person, y'all real non-responsive right now. However, moving back to the subject at hand, it was the teacher's voice that was familiar with the student. So the student was okay as long as they were around Lady McKissick's voice. The title of my message today is My Sheep Know My Voice. My sheep know my voice. My sheep know my voice. That's coming from John chapter 10, verses 1 through 6. John chapter 10, verses 1 through 6. My sheep know my voice. Now, I don't want to be too, too deep, too super saved, too spiritual. But we're in the ninth month of school. And some kids are just now going into a building. So... If you think about a pregnancy, we're in the third trimester. We're almost at the end of it. So in the beginning, when the relationship was formed, many of the students could only hear the teacher's voice. That's all they heard. They didn't want to interact, just like the embryo in the, the woman's womb. 
once the hearing was apparent, they could hear. Although they're kicking and screaming and moving, the woman can't feel it. And as they got bigger, as they moved into the second trimester, then you could feel the kicks. But the baby was okay because they could hear the teacher's voice. Now, when the child finally came into the building, the child, although there were hundreds of teachers in that building, the child went to that teacher's voice. There was comfort in the teacher's voice. There was peace in the teacher's voice. My sheep know my voice. I'm going to read John chapter 10, verse 5. I'm going to put it on the screen. I'll be reading from the ERV version. You can read along with me or you can just listen. Verse 5 says, but sheep will never follow someone they don't know. They will run away from him because they don't know his voice. My sheep know my voice. Once again, sheep will never follow someone they don't know. They will run away from him because they don't know his voice. That is the word of God for the people of God. Will the people of God please say amen. Today, for a few five minutes, I'm going to let you know how you know you're hearing God's voice and a couple of things that can stop you from hearing God's voice. This has been a huge thing in our Christian walk. God told me this. God spoke to me that. God, 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 God. And you always have that other, how you know it's God? How you know it's God? And the older folks in the church will say, you know, you know when you know. You know that you know, no, no. And it does get a little bit confusing because the only true answer we have is you will know God's voice when you hear it. And that's the only answer you're going to get from here. You know it's God and not yourself. And when we relate this and, and correlate it to the education field, to a classroom, it's the same thing. There are all of the teachers, but the student knows the teacher's voice. They will know the teacher's voice. Let me go back to the text, and I'm going to make it simple. Jesus said, it is certainly true that when a man enters the sheep pen, he should use the gate. If he climbs in some other way, he is a robber. He is trying to steal the sheep. But the man who takes care of the sheep enters through the gate. He is the shepherd. The man who guards the gate opens the gate for the shepherd, not anyone else. And the sheep listens to the voice of the shepherd. He calls his own sheep using their names, and he leads them out. He brings all of his sheep out. Then he goes ahead of them and leads them. The sheep follow him because they know his voice. But sheep will never follow someone they don't know. They will, never run, they will run away from him because they don't know him. Jesus told the people this story, but they didn't understand it. So you know God's voice, even though there's other voices, the voice that, is, that comes through the front door, that's God's voice. Now, here are a few things that you need to know. You really need to know this. The teacher is the shepherd. The teacher is the one that guides you. The teacher is the one that leads you. And there's a few things that can happen when you're teaching and learning online. I'm just going to move this out the way because I want to be transparent with you. I already know what my notes say. So if you're in front of that computer as a student, I asked my son and a couple of his teammates, do you learn online or do you learn face-to-face? And when they said they learned online, I said, okay, how do you know that I'm the one, I'm not the one that's teaching you in front of that screen? And one of them said, well, 
you know, because you're a basketball coach. I said, no, I'm a teacher too. And one said, well, you know, because I can see the teacher. Well, what if the teacher's not on the screen? Well, I know my teacher's voice. Okay, now we get somewhere. You know your teacher's voice. So, all right, makes sense. Next kid. It all came down to knowing the teacher's voice knowing who was speaking and then I asked a couple of the parents I said does your child learn online yes they do coach they sure do so what makes you know that the child is being taught well say you know honestly I really don't know okay you know your teacher's name right yes so when you walk by if you heard a male voice when your child's teacher is a female what would you do well I would stop and check it out. I will find out what's going on here because I know the voice of my child's teacher. I know who should be instructing them. I know who should be guiding them. So when I hear another voice, I know something's not right. And because something's not right, I need to check it out because your voice doesn't match the voice of my child's teacher. Now we're getting somewhere. So you know the voice because you listen to the voice. You spend time with the voice. Now let me correlate this voice over to Christ. As Christians, we know God's voice because God's voice is the voice that guides us in the right direction. And when we hear another voice that does not sound like God's voice, then we understand that it ain't God. It might not be the devil. It could be our friend, it could be our family member, it could be our enemy, or it could be ourself. But it ain't God. It's not God's voice guiding us. It's our own inhibitions, our, our own motivations, our own, something we watched on TV. It may be love and basketball. It may be the circle. It may be, you know, the bachelor. Now we're getting our voice from, you know, Gucci Man or, or Migos or somewhere else. We're not getting our voice from Christ. So we have to be very careful that you are keying to God's voice in your life. Now back to the classroom. I asked my son, so, okay, what happens when you don't hear your teacher? What are some reasons? Because a lot of us say, well, God just ain't talking to me. I don't know. Well, how do you... What, what can stop you from hearing God's voice? Or when it was them, I said, what can stop you from hearing your teacher? And he gave me a good list, and I appreciate you, AJ, for giving me that because it goes right along with what I have to say today. Sometimes, number one, you can't hear God's voice because it's muted. It's muted. Point number one, you can't hear God's voice because it's muted. That means either you have your device on mute or he's not speaking loud enough to you. Either way, the speaking is still happening, but you can't hear it because it's muted. There's a disconnection between the volume. So you're sitting in front of it. You see things happening, but you don't hear it. The teacher's talking, but you don't know what's going on because you can't hear anything. Be careful that you're not disconnected from Christ. When you're disconnected from Christ, when there's a connectivity issue, then, of course, you may not hear God. You may not hear the Master. Number one, there's a disconnection. Somebody's muted. I said, okay, that makes sense. I was trying to kind of usher him to say something, so he just hit him out. He says, well, you know, another thing, another way that I can't hear my teacher is if, uh, if, uh, if, uh, and this is, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if, 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 uh, if, 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 uh, and it really came down to if there was too much noise around me, there were too many distractions. Point number two, you can't hear God's voice when you're distracted. You cannot hear God's voice when you are distracted. You may be sitting right in front of God. You may be sitting right in front 
of your teacher. You may be sitting right in front of your calling, but you don't know what to do because you're distracted by work. You're distracted by Clubhouse. You're distracted by Instagram. You're distracted by TikTok, Snapchat, uh, Joan, Frank, Ashley, Keita, Janika, Marie. You're distracted by some troll on the Internet. Like, you're so distracted that you miss what God has for you. God is speaking, but you can't hear him because you are distracted. That's a reason that you can't hear God's voice. Number one, you're disconnected. Number two, you are distracted. Another reason that you can't hear God's voice is because there's too many other voices. Don't get this distracted. I mean, don't get this mixed up with being distracted. You're focused, but there's so many other voices coming at you. You've allowed so many people to speak into your life. You've allowed so many people to speak over your life that you can't hear from God because everybody got a word from you, for you. Everybody, you and everybody prayer group, you and you calling everybody bishop. You jump from church to church to church to church. That is not healthy. Too many voices. I'm at the game coaching, and I'm, I am got a play in. I, I call it. I drew it up. They go out there. One kid, while I was talking, they were listening to their dad. And now they don't remember anything I said. I said, drive and kick. Dad said, shoot the tray. Who do you think they listen to? They're going to listen to the voice that tells them whatever puts them in a position to feel the best. So as if God is telling me, don't take that job, don't interview for that job, or he's saying, take that job, you better get out there, step out on faith. But another voice says, I got something better for you. You ain't even got to work here. I'm going to pay you more. You got to do less work. You're going to have to compromise your, your beliefs. You're going to have to compromise your patterns. But that sounds a lot easier. So now you have to say, is it God? Or is that God? Is that really God? And you're going to say, well, that's God because it sounds better. No, it's not. Don't have everybody in your ear. You're not going to hear God's voice when you're on mute, when you're distracted. You're not going to hear God's voice when everybody's in your ear. You're not. Make sure you guard who gets to speak over your life. So, now that we know what it means to hear God's voice and we know what can stop you from hearing God's voice, what do you do when you hear God's voice? What do you do? What do you do? I mean, it's not rhetorical. When you hear God's voice, what should you do? When those children came into that building, simple, they obeyed what the teacher told them to do. When you hear God's voice, do what he asks you to do. If you hear him loud and clear, do what he asks you to do. Because my sheep know my voice. And it said that the master is going to guide you, going to keep you from trouble. He's going to go out in front of you. And he's going to clear the way and get things ready for you. So I just wanted to give you that very short few five minutes as I promise message my sheep know my voice let us pray God thank you for the moment please let this be a blessing to somebody let this encourage somebody and let it bless somebody those who are struggling to hear your voice let them hear clearly from you right now God let them continue to listen when you are speaking God you never stop talking we stop listening we were distracted. We had you on mute. We had too many other voices in our ears. God, help us to clear those things out of our way so that we can hear clearly from you and so that we can walk into a spirit of comfort, into a place where we don't have to see you. See, when the students came in, they may not have seen the teacher. They may not have ever been able to touch the teacher, but they had the faith to listen, to walk without seeing. 
and that voice was connected to the voice on that screen. And that's how we're going to be, God. We thank you for allowing us to have the faith. So although we can't touch you, we can't see you, but we can hear your voice. God, let us hear your voice. Amen. Now, if you are here and you don't know God at all, you want to be saved, this is an opportunity. Repeat the words after me. God, I'm a sinner. I want to be saved. I believe your son died on the cross. He was buried, but he rose again. And now my sins are covered in his blood. God, I invite you into my spirit. I invite you into my heart. And I want to live by you. Amen, amen, and amen. If you said that, I want to tell you now that you are saved. I'm not telling you that your life is going to be peaches and cream from here on out because it's not. But you're saved. Now you're going to go through things, but God is going to be walking with you. If you want to be a member of this church, I ask that you go to our website, be the realm.com backslash join. We love to have you. We love to spend some time with you. We love to get to know you. But until next time, this is Pastor Coach McKissick. I want to challenge you to be the ram of somebody's life and win the 97%. God loves you, and so do I. I'm out. <laughs>